y'all. Thank you so much for coming out today. I'm going to start us off with a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the traditional ancestral and unceded land of the Western Abenaki people where we gather today. We honor the Abenaki people who have been living and working on this land from time immemorial. Immemorial, uh, Professor Speak, not me. <laughs> um, we recognize that colonialism and the oppression of native peoples is a current and ongoing process, and we commit to building our awareness of our present part participation. We give thanks to those who have come before us and honor Vermont's indigenous people, the Abenaki people of the dawn. Welcome to our protest today. This is a louder. That's not a normal thing that I hear because I'm extremely loud and shrill, but I will be double shrill today, folks. <laughs> Welcome to our protest. This is for all of us. On the day of action organized all across this country by the Women's March, our march and rally is sponsored by Vermont for Reproductive Liberty, Burlington for Reproductive Justice, UVM Planned Parenthood Generation Action, and the Vermont State Labor Counselor, Council. Our march has been endorsed by 20 groups and growing, and we will list those groups in our second section today. We are rallying and marching today to send loud and clear message. We, sorry, we won't go back. We rally in solidarity with women and people who can become pregnant across the country and around the world who are resisting attacks on our bodily autonomy from the states in the US where abortion has been banned to women-led uprising in Iran. Woo! Sorry, I gotta flip my page here. Remember, grassroots is a little bit clumsy and it's authentic. Yeah, you got this! Thank you. Our unifying message is direct and simple. We call on Vermonters to vote for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment this November. We, de <laughs> Hell yeah! we demand the passage of a shield law to protect doctors providing telemedicine and abortion pills to states where abortion is banned. We call for everyone to unite and fight for reproductive justice throughout the United States and around the world. Just to give you a little bit of overview so you can plan your Saturday, our rally and our march will begin with opening speakers. We'll do a march up and down Church Street where we'll inspire people to join with us and then we'll come back and reassemble for concluding speakers and an open mic for anybody that wants to speak as well. We'll also do an upcoming announcement for upcoming organizing, as well as actions that you can take now to protect reproductive rights in the great state of Vermont, as well as across the country. Um, I do also want to give a statement. Uh, one of our sponsoring organizations, Migrant Justice. Um, one of their activists and farm workers, Wendy Bernardino, um, who has lived with her family on a dairy farm in Vermont since 2014. Three years ago, she was being driven home from church when her car was pulled over by Border Patrol and Wendy and her children were detained. Since then, Wendy has attended regular appointments at immigration authorities and compiled with other every order but this summer, without warning, she was told by ICE that she must leave the country or she will be detained and deported. Ooh. Wendy's attorneys have filed a petition to stop her deportation, but ICE needs to hear from you. A mass outpouring of community support can, can and does have impact and could be the difference between Wendy being deported or allowed to remain in Vermont with her family. Please go to Migrant Justice website and send an email today to the ICE office in charge of Wendy's case to express your support. ICE's attacks on Wendy's rights and her bodily autonomy is an attack on all of us. Feminist solidarity knows no borders. Hello, everyone. I'm going 
going to reintroduce myself again. My name is Hannah. My pronouns are they, them, and I am the Northern Vermont organizer with Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund. As well as for Vermont for, re for Reproductive Liberty, it is the campaign to pass Vermont's Reproductive Liberty Amendment, also known as Proposal 5 and Article 22. It will be on your ballot this November. The ballots have all been sent out to all registered voters in Vermont, and you can bring your ballot literally down here and around the corner to drop it off, or you can mail it back in. We need to take this step. I will make it very clear that what we are seeing across this country, especially in those states that had trigger laws, is horrible. And we can never allow it to happen here in Vermont. That's right. Yeah. This step is one step in many. It will not be a fix-all. There are many steps to go. This is not a movement. It, or, it, this is not a moment. It is a movement. That's right. On June 24th, decision day, some of you might recall me standing up on the steps on the church at the end of Church Street. That day was one of the hardest days of my life. This is personal, as I'm sure it is for all of you. And I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to tell my story, something I never imagined I would do on the steps of that church, nor on the, on the steps of the city of City Hall in the city that I live. But you know what? I got to do it. I got to make this real. I got to make people understand that we cannot generalize health care because there is dangers in that. I am non-binary. I have a uterus. I have been pregnant twice. The first pregnancy, I chose to get an abortion. It was a medication abortion, and I still, to this day, consider it one of the best decisions I have ever made for myself. <laughs> Only a few years after that medication abortion, I got pregnant again. And that pregnancy, I chose to keep. But sometimes, that's not how things work. And it ended up being a non-viable pregnancy at five and a half months. And I had to get a second trimester abortion. Every single pregnancy is a unique experience. And when we generalize it, and when politicians get involved and try to generalize this form of health care, this necessary health care, it causes not only emotional turmoil, but physical as well. And it is dangerous. There are people in this country who cannot even access their miscarriage management because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We cannot allow that to happen in this state. We need to keep ill will politicians out of our medical care. And I will also be honest in saying for both of my abortions, there was not a single politician in the room when I had them. And you know what? There should not be. And quite frankly, if a politician tried to come into those rooms, the shriek that would have come out of my mouth, the rage-induced shriek, would have been stuff of legend. Let me tell you, folks, I am a scrappy person, and I do not tolerate crap. And I'm not tolerating it now. So this November, please vote for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. Let's make history in this state and in this country. And let it be our first step. And there are many, many more to come. Right now, I'm going to lead a quick chant, if I can get my papers together. Once again, folks, we are grassroots here. <laughs> and because I was raised as a Catholic in a strict Catholic household, and I will state that the ethos that I carry in my adult life and the how and why I show up in my community does come from my Catholic upbringing, I have much frustration with the fact that this religion or the people that lead this religion have told me that I cannot have bodily autonomy based on those, that religion, which by the way, I don't really agree with because I'm also for showing up for community. I'm going to lead this particular one. When I 
say keep your rosaries, you're going to say off my ovaries. <laughs> All right. Keep your rosaries. Off my ovaries. Keep your rosaries. Off my ovaries. One more time. Keep your rosaries. Off my ovaries. All right, folks. The one thing, we live in a town and in a state that has multiple colleges. And on June 24th, this is when college let out. It had already been let out. And we didn't get to hear from a lot of the amazing college students who are very much impacted by the decision of SCOTUS to overturn Roe v. Wade, which is why I'm really excited to be introducing to you all Maxine Florida Liza, <laughs> president of UVM Planned Parenthood Generation Action, and is a UVM student. Of standing together and demanding what is right and deserved for everyday people. 
The Vermont AFL-CIO stands firm with women and people with uteruses, and with not, we will not back down. Our power comes from our numbers, and those in public office need to know our support. They need our support if they want to see another term. Let me repeat that, that if our public people, if our public officers want our support, they cannot back down That's right. from our rights. Woo! For the people, for the women, and the individuals with uteruses, this is for us. Let us be clear in saying that we demand to see reproductive rights enshrined in our state constitution through Article 22. Woo! So now I'm going to talk on my own behalf. And I'm going to give you a little something, and I'm going to start off with this. Let this sink in. Life is full circle, and sometimes when it comes back around, it's not pretty. And right now, it's full circle. We're repeating history. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you a story. I work in clinical health care. I worked in an emergency room for over 10 years. I had a 12-year-old little girl come in with her mother. She was pregnant. She was raped by her stepfather. The mother wanted her to have this child because the mother does not believe in abortion. Now us as health care providers, we have to provide non-biased care. We take an oath. That's correct. We take an oath and we have to treat. That mother has the right to make the decision for that 12-year-old child. That 12-year-old child gave birth to a child. Now let me tell you the history today. That was back in 2007. I'll never forget it, it lives with me today. That young girl, she lives in Tenth City. That 12-year-old little girl lives in Tenth City. She's a major drug addict. And that little baby, She's dead. She killed herself. And that mother that wanted her to have that child, she's still with the man who raped her own daughter. But that's OK. You let that sink in. So vote no and see what happens. Then we're going to have to repeat history for the wrong reason. The wrong reason, and then you forgot what happened, what our grandparents fought for, what our mothers fought for. And now we are fighting for our children and our grandchildren. So you vote yes on Article 22. And remember that. You let that sink in. Yeah! Oh, let me introduce you to Miss Aubrey here. I don't have a chant for you, but if you want to say one, please feel free. Yeah! <laughs> All right, hello everyone. How are we doing today? Yeah! All right, my name is Aubrey. As she said, I am also a member of UVM Planned Parenthood Generation Action. Yeah! I am going to talk a little bit about how important it is for students to get involved. I see some UVM faces. UVM people, make some noise. Woo!
This is called grassroots swag, folks. <laughs> grassroots swag. All right, Emily Reynolds is a tech worker for Estee Lauder. She became involved in reproductive justice as a midwifery student in El Paso. She worked along the border to help deliver babies for primarily Mexican women. During her time in El Paso, she also worked on an abortion help hotline. She is one of the founders for Burlington for Reproductive Justice, the organization who helped organize this march today. Please give your support for Emily Reynolds. Yes, we can! Free abortion on demand! 
senators to vote for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment in November. We demand the passage of a shield law to protect doctors providing telemedicine and abortion pills to stay where abortion is banned. We call for everyone to unite and fight for reproductive justice throughout the U.S. and around the world. Thank you. I'm Jody Woos from Burlington for Reproductive Justice. I'm going to lead a chant. Abortion is a human right, not just for the rich and white. Abortion is a human right, not just for the rich and white. Abortion is a human right, not just for the rich and white. Abortion is a human right, not just for the rich and white. Thank you. We're getting really great. That's our chance. This march today has come together really quickly and it's been endorsed by 20 groups in our community. Let's hear it. All those standing up for reproductive justice. Ask Me Local, 1674. UFCW, 1459. Indivisible Mad River Valley. Waitsfield, Town Democratic Committee. Martine Gulick for Vermont Senate. Your Town Democratic Committee. Sorry, page turn. <laughs> oh, there are lots more. Here we go. Essex Town Democrats. Essex Resists. National Association of Social Workers, Vermont Chapter. Migrant Justice. Central Vermont DSA. Indivisible Calus. Old North End Mutual Aid, Democracy in Action, Women's League for International Peace and Freedom, Champlain Valley DSA. Let's hear it for those groups. I'd like to read a statement from Migrant Justice. One of their activists and leaders has been not only arrested, but is facing deportation. Wendy. Bernardo, I'd like to read their statement. Wendy Bernardo has lived with her family on a dairy farm in Vermont since 2014. Three years ago, she was being driven from home from church when her car was pulled over by Border Patrol. Wendy and her children were detained. Since then, Wendy has, attained, has attended regular appointments with immigration authorities, has complied with every order. But this summer, without warning, she was told by ICE that she must leave the country or she will be detained and deported. <laughs> Wendy's attorneys have filed a petition to stop her deportation, but ICE needs to hear from you. A mass outpouring of community support can and does have an impact and can be the difference between Wendy being deported or allowed to remain in Vermont with her family. Please go to Migrant Justice, the Chichia Migrantes website, and send an email today to the ICE office in charge of Wendy's case to express your support. ICE's attack on Wendy's rights and her bodily autonomy is an attack on us all. Feminist solidarity knows no borders. It just, just, just to their name and their group. So Andy's ready to go. Andy's ready to go. Awesome. We have a group of speakers to listen to today. I'd like to welcome Andy Blanchett from Ask Me Local 1674. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, solidarity with Wendy. Um, thank you to the organizers that put this on, and thank you to everybody here that showed out. Give yourself a round of applause. Let's keep that energy up. So, I'm Andy Blanchett, and I'm a proud union member with Ask Me Local 1674, the Howard Center Union. Yeah. Thank you. 
I first want to thank the organizers. Oh, I already did that part. Sorry, y'all. But most importantly, we're all here together, standing up for reproductive rights and agreeing that abortion is a human right. When we say that reproductive health and abortion are fundamental rights, what exactly do we mean? When I say that abortion rights are workers' rights, what do I mean? When the ruling class decided to roll this country back in time by overturning Roe, they did so knowing this would economically, physically, and mentally abuse those groups of workers most targeted by state violence and state regulation. This includes cis women, women of color, and trans individuals. That's right. As we know, in this country, when the government works to undermine health care, the poor and working class of any marginalized group are the first to bear the brunt of that blunder. That's right. We're here today to spread the word that Vermont will begin the steps to ensure that all people who live here have bodily autonomy and uh, we deserve as human beings. This starts with voting yes for Prop 5, also known as Article 22 and the RLA, and to demand our state legislature enact shield laws that will protect providers who aid in abortion care. This will take collective effort for Vermonters, far and wide. I challenge each person here to talk with at least three people in their lives about this upcoming election and make sure they know about Prop 5. There is disinformation disseminating across the state and it is essential we have Prop 5 passed. With the potential for a federal abortion ban around the corner, it is essential that Vermont enact shield laws to protect our providers. I challenge each of us to contact both our local and state representatives after this rally to voice our support for shield laws. That's right. <laughs> On that note, I want to thank all of the people in the states where abortion rights have been whittled away to almost nothing over the past 20 years, but who kept fighting That's to provide these services to workers and poor folks. These are the folks we need to look to for guidance, the auntie networks down south and the Mexican underground reproductive networks that have shown us how to move within a corrupt and unjust system to ensure all people have access to abortion care, even when moving through the shadows. I want to end by reminding everyone who showed up here that trans folks and trans workers in particular have been seeing our bodily autonomy ripped away from us across the United That's States right. as well. That's right. Reproductive justice affects everyone, and it is always the poor and working class who will first suffer. We ask for solidarity from the cisgender community. We need you to show up for reproductive rights. We need you to show up for trans health care and be loud about your support for trans bodily autonomy. An injury to one is an injury to all! Maybe you've heard the name 
Masa Amini in the news in the last few weeks. She was a 22-year-old Kurdish Iranian woman whose crime was an improper hijab. She was arrested, detained by the morality police, beaten, and murdered by the state. And protests for freedom have erupted around Iran and around the world. The Iranian American community is small in Vermont, but they're here today. Can you make some noise for them for coming out today? <laughs> Compulsory hijab fight flies in the face of bodily autonomy. And these women are fighting for just that. And they're not only fighting, they're dying. A protest like this can get you killed. And it has killed several women, 16 years old, 17, 18, 20s. High school students and college students are on the front lines of this revolution. So we ask that you care about this movement today because it's about you as well. So a vote for bodily autonomy in the United States is also imperative that you care about bodily autonomy in the rest of the world. I want to thank you guys for listening today. Please support the women of Iran. Do not forget, I'm going to say, say her name, and I need you to say, Masa Amini. Say her name. Masa Amini. Say her name. Masa Amini. Say her name. Masa Amini. Zan Zendegi Azadi. Zan Zendegi Azadi. Here's one for the Americans. Women, life, freedom. Women, life, freedom. Women, life, freedom. Women, life, freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we'll hear from Martine Gulick, candidate for the Vermont Senate. All right, thank you, Ashley. You got Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, louder. Hi, my name is Martine Larock Gulick, and I am running for state senate in the Chittenden Central District of Burlington, Winooski, and Essex. I'm not, I'm not here today to talk about me or my campaign. I'm here to show you solidarity and to tell a story. My mother was born and raised in Montreal. She was a devout French-Canadian Catholic who attended Mass seven days a week. The church was an important part of her education, her upbringing, and her daily life. She married my father at 19, and because of his career in the Air Force, she spent years traveling never spending much time in one place. In the late 60s, she was living in the Midwest, far away from her family in Canada. She was 29 and she had four children. I was one of them. The six of us and our cat lived in a small mobile home. We were poor. My father and mother had decided that six was a good sized family. And my mother had decided that she didn't want any more children. At that time, other than my father, the church was all she had. She went to confession to speak of her dilemma, being Catholic and not wanting any more children. To my mother's shock and sadness, she was told she would go to heaven if she had more kids and hell if she did not. In the end, we remained a family of four children and my mom gradually moved away from the church. My parents were able to use their limited resources to bring us to Vermont, and all four of us were first-generation college graduates. The reason I bring this up is not to vilify the church or demean the clergy, but simply to illustrate that some institutions, including our government, do not, they're not equipped to tell people when and with whom they should have children. That's right. This is a very personal decision that should be made between a health care provider and a person who can get pregnant. The church and the government need to keep their doctrine and their laws off of our bodies and leave yeah. health care and family planning decisions to those who are directly impacted. I support reproductive justice for all. Thank you. Yeah. All right, okay, next, oh, okay, sorry. Um, all right, the next speaker we have is Ginny Sassenman with Indivisible in Callis. 
Give it up for Jenny! <laughs> so hi everybody. I've been fighting this fight for at least 50 years now. And here we all are. And I have bad news for everybody. The bad news is, if the Republicans take control of the House and the Senate in D.C., and if Trump or DeSantis or some other monster with the GOP wins the White House in 2024, whatever we pass in Vermont to protect reproductive liberty will not help us. We all know the extreme right wing wants to pass a flat abortion ban for the entire country, including Vermont. Okay, but I'm a really optimistic person by nature, and the good news is we can stop that from happening. But we have to do more than support the RLA and vote for the RLA. We have to support Democratic candidates for the Senate and the House. Even if you don't like them very much, we have to support them. So I'm going to give you a handful of names who are in very tight races and could make a difference to all our futures, our daughters' futures, our granddaughters' futures. And a bonus is that many of these candidates are candidates of color. You might have noticed DC is a little bit white. So I'm going to ask you to please go online for one or more of these candidates. You can write postcards. You can do text banking. You can do phone banking. There is a lot you can do from Vermont. So first, Val Demings in Florida. She is within striking distance of beating Marco Rubio. Ralph Warnock, we want him reelected in Georgia. And you can go to Stacey Abrams' group, Fair Fight, and sign up to be a volunteer with Fair Fight. Then, another woman of color, Sherry Beasley, a Democrat in North Carolina. She could very well win the Senate, but she needs our help, so please help her. Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire. You can go over to New Hampshire and knock on doors for Maggie Hassan. We need her to get reelected. Two more. John Fetterman in Pennsylvania, running against the wildly crazy Dr. Oz. That is a tight race. Help Fetterman get elected. I myself am going to Pennsylvania to knock on doors. We can do this. One more. Mandela Barnes, another man of color, the lieutenant governor of Wisconsin, running to defeat perhaps the, the least apt of the current GOP senators, Ron Johnson. Mandela Barnes in Wisconsin, help him get elected. So it is not enough to support the RLA. It is not enough to support reproductive rights in Vermont. We have to be active on the national level as well. So I want to do a chant. I'm sure you all know it. Stand up, fight back. Stand up. Stand up. Fight back. Stand up. Fight back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce Robin Lloyd. She's a person who'd be familiar to many, many of you. She is here representing the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom.
I'm figuring it out. Can you hear me? Here, let me hold it. Can you just speak into it? Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I wanted to let you all know that uh, this organization, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, is actually 100 years old. And back there, back in the day, my grandmother was involved. And she was friends with a woman named Margaret Sanger. Do any of you remember her? She was really the first uh, reproductive rights warrior. She uh, tried to send contraceptive information through the mails back then in the early uh, 1900s, and she was put in jail. So she was one of the very first of the many women who have been, uh, have been uh, in prison because of the patriarchal society that we live in. But I'd like to point out some other ways in which we are, we are actually controlled by the governments that we live in, and that is through nationalism. Yes, we, we love our country, but why are we willing to send our sons and now our daughters and of course our taxes off to wars, wars that have proven in retrospect to be unwinnable and in some cases even bogus. And now, because the nature of war has changed, changed we are sending not our sons and daughters, but our treasure, billions of dollars in the form of weapons to continue the war in Ukraine. Let me read you some sentences from an op-ed written by my friend from Quaker Meeting here in, here in Burlington. And just to remind you that Quakers believe that there is that of uh, that, that of God in every person and that therefore we cannot support wars. So we are against all wars. She asks, what does it mean to love one's country? When cities have been destroyed and thousands of Ukrainians killed, including hundreds of children, what does the heart counsel then? I imagine a Ukrainian mother looking out over the wreckage and weeping at the sheer waste of precious human lives and homes and communities. Uh, our president, President Biden, counsels the president of Ukraine to keep fighting. He and Congress and our congressmen keep sending them more weapons. But if we could counsel, if our organization could, could counsel President Zelensky, we feel he needs to know that there is no shame in exchanging land for peace, of choosing or accepting a temporary loss of land through negotiations over a permanent loss of so many lives and basic human services. The war in Ukraine is making it harder to deliver babies and provide birth control, abortion services, and other essential care. Women who flee from Ukraine go to Poland, and it's even, even harder there to um, obtain those resources. So we must reach out and call for peace in Ukraine. No more shipments of arms, no more talk of weakening Russia with missile attacks. Our organization, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, is working with women in Ukraine and Russia who are yearning for peace. In both these countries, and even here, it is not popular to call for negotiations, even though the presidents of China and India call for it, as well as the head of the UN and the Pope. So with the threat of nuclear escalation hovering over this terrible conflict in Ukraine. There is no time to lose. We urge you all to contact your representatives, the candidates that are running for national office, and to say to them, please, please say no to war. Thank you. Russian opposition, Dan McHugh, Newton and his fascists.
All right, okay. For our next speaker, we have Kate Brown from the Democratic Socialists of America of the Central Vermont chapter. So let's give it up for Kate Brown. Woo! All right. Oh my gosh. Um, I think I got it. I don't, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm really loud. I have one thing to talk about. It's crisis pregnancy centers. Do you guys know about these? Yes. Okay, let's talk about it. Uh, Central Vermont DSA organizes a statewide effort to expose and eliminate crisis pregnancy centers in Vermont. A lot of people don't know what they are. You'd be surprised. These centers are fake clinics that exist to prevent people from seeking and accessing abortion. That's it. They have no licensed medical staff, usually, but they do close online and in person as free clinics. They lure vulnerable folks in their doors. Once folks are inside, they lie about the risks of abortion. They give medically unnecessary ultrasounds to pregnant people and misinterpret the results in an attempt to deny and delay care. They give hundreds and hundreds of non-diagnostic ultrasounds in Vermont every year, and they brag about it on their website. They support dangerous treatments like abortion pill reversal. They are putting lives at risk in our communities, and they are causing public health harm. There are nine active crisis pregnancy centers in Vermont. That's three, three for every abortion clinic that we have here in this state. Many of them, most of them, are outposts of massive evangelical anti-abortion networks with huge funding, huge resources, and yet they operate as tax-exempt charities in Vermont. The most well-funded center in our state is Aspire Now. It's in Williston. Do you know where it is? We're going to find it. We're going to demonstrate. They represent, all of these CPCs represent the local presence of the far-right movement, a foothold of it, of the money, of the resources here in Vermont. Don't think it's not here. Most people don't know, so what we do is we let people know. And the more we organize, the more we talk to Vermonters, we see that they will not tolerate this type of deceptive and unethical treatment of our fellow Vermonters. We organize in Central Vermont monthly informational pickets. I have flyers for our next one. We go to the CareNet facility on Main Street in Barrie. Uh, the next one is Saturday, October 22nd at 1 p.m. Um, uh, and what we do is we, we hand out information about CPCs. We also hand out resources, free pregnancy tests, uh, information on how to access real comprehensive abortion care. Uh, I, it really is important to have strength in numbers. We've seen increasing intimidation at these events. I really hope y'all will come out, and get more information from Central Vermont DSA. We're at cvtdsa.org. Um, I also want to shout out, we are hosting a forum um, online on Zoom on October 27th. We are going to be talking to progressive allies in the legislature, Senate and House, led by Rep. Emma Mulvaney Stanick. She is introducing, along with a companion bill in the Senate, anti CPC legislation in this yep. next session. It hasn't come around for years and years. It's important to bring it up as a part of the Shield Law, as a part of reproductive justice here in Vermont. That meeting is on October 27th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Again, you can go to our website, get information about it, get involved in the fight. It's one piece of reproductive justice here in Vermont, but it is tied to everything that we're doing here. We stand in solidarity with all the groups here. We hope to see you out in front of CPCs in Barrie and in Williston in the coming months. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's do one more chant. Um, all right. What do we want? The RLA. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? The RLA. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? The RLA. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? The RLA. When do we want it? Now. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna have an open mic. Uh, sorry. Sorry. I'm a very demanding person. Uh, speaking of being demanding, I just wanted to remind everybody that today, one month from today, is November 8th, which we will be voting on the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. For those of you who might have not been here at the beginning, my name is Hannah, my pronouns are they, them. I am the Northern Vermont Organizer for Planned Parenthood Vermont Action Fund, as well as Vermont for Reproductive Liberty, which is the campaign to pass the Reproductive Liberty Amendment. Please vote yes. All of the ballots have been sent out to, in the mail to any registered voters here in Vermont. And you can drop those ballots off if you're a Burlington citizen. Around the corner, there is a drop box. You can also mail them back in. 
And yeah, we're doing open mic, so I'm sure some people have some stuff that they want to say. So if you have something that you want to say, please come up over here. We would love to hear from you, and this is going to be closing out our uh, rally today. Woo! Don't be shy. This is a great time to just let it out of your system. Here I am. Oh, oh we got one started. Keep coming up here. issue. I mean, speech. It in the mail. I am the uh, former Vermont chair oh, I know. of the you Vermont ERA campaign yeah. for the National the Organization for Women. We had an incredible campaign in 1986, and we barely lost it, just by a fraction. And you want to know why that is? because we did not go into rural areas. So even though you think that we've got this vote, don't think that the right wing is not going into rural areas of Vermont and organizing. They, they handed out vicious literature like ERA equals AIDS. They were able to convince rural voters to turn out big time and uh, vote against the Equal Rights Amendment. So that's one little piece of advice that I have. Another one, as a investigative journalist and historian, I did a little research, and guess where the first state in the union was that criminalized abortion? Just guess. Anyone have a guess? Massachusetts. What was the second state? Vermont. What's the connection? The connection is that the mill owners in Massachusetts that employed Vermont women uh, didn't like these uppity women. They were starting to ask for higher wages and better working conditions. So they started a back to the home campaign. And how did they do that? They said that the Yankee women, the white women, um, because there were immigrants coming in and taking jobs in the mills, they said to them, you need to go home and have babies because otherwise we're going to have race suicide. And they actually succeeded in getting some of these, these women, they were our first feminists, even, even before Susan B. Anthony and all those famous uh, suffragists, the first feminists were working in the mills. They did their first their first woman's magazine, and they got up on their soapboxes and started talking about better working conditions. So it was a combination of mill owners and the clergies and doctors that started the first pro-family back to the home campaign. So it's just a little piece of history you should know. And, and my final thought on it is that uh, Choice is a working woman's issue. It doesn't get said enough. Wouldn't you agree? You gotta have time to plan your families and when you get to work and when you don't. So those are my little lessons for today. Power to you all. Vote. Vote yes. All right. I believe this is our last speaker. We have Jade Hendley from the Women's International League for I Peace and do that because I'm on the clock. Freedom. Freedom. Sorry, not tech uh, director is here. I'll just press the buttons. I got it. Oh, no, unfortunately, because I, I'm, I'm not speaking because I, I am really angry about the about the about the right to abortion being yeah. taken away. It is hypocritical to take it away because of the of the value of human life. If that were so, then, then we wouldn't be fighting so many wars. I think Robin had a very important point to, to make about the uh, about um, trying about trying to make peace at all at all costs and, and to keep from having nuclear war. Oh, if, 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 so I think it's so I think it's hypocritical of, of, to say that of, of, that that an that, that an unborn an, an unborn fetus um, is, is a more important than the life of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a woman who has already enjoyed life for, for many years. 
and, and I want to say that this is also personal for me because, uh, because, um, because not having the, having access um, kills kills women. My my mother's best friend um, di um, um, died because she, uh, be because she had an 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 an, uh, an abortion at the age of 16 a long time ago before it was illegal. I mean, before it was legal, and um, and, um, and and the scar tissue from that abortion broke, uh, built up over many years. She always had very painful periods. She wanted to have a child. She wanted to have children, but but it made her sterile. And 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 and, and she was and, and she was the second mother to us when we were growing up. And and and, 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 and she was taken from us in 1983. And it didn't help that the hospital at first misdiagnosed the, the agony that she was going through and sent her home with a pain killer. And she and she had to come back the next day, but and then died and then died in the hospital from from sepsis. And and and, so, and anyways, but that's all I have to say. I am a medical student at the University of Vermont. And as a healthcare worker, I want you to know that we see you, we support you, and we are fighting with you. Thank you for supporting laws that allow nurses and doctors to do their jobs without political interference. Hey everybody, I'm Andy. I'm with AFSCME 1674, the Howard Center Union. Uh, I just spoke earlier and I just wanted to really emphasize that all of these struggles are connected. If you're here today and you're fighting for abortion rights, I need you to show up to every other event that comes out or get your friends and family involved. Show us how you can. Some of us can't be physically at all of these rallies. There's a lot of them. <laughs> They're kind of exhausting sometimes, and we're all busy people. But I really need to emphasize that if you're here, you need to come to all of the rallies. You need to support the movement for black lives. That is essential. We're talking about bodily autonomy. That's right. Okay, we're talking about people having control over their bodies. People getting thrown in prison That's right. fights against that. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention is shout out to DSA, Vermont DSA. What a great group. Honestly, they're the ones that are standing with working people. If you weren't aware, they're showing up to labor rallies and conventions to support us. Working class people, right now we're about to be in a recession, okay? I need people to really pay attention to what groups are showing up for you. DSA is showing up for you. So support them, become a member, please. And, yeah, and support your local unions. If you don't have a union, unionize your workplace. And when employers are trying to uh, union bust by saying we will pay for your reproductive health care, remember without a union they can take that away as soon as they want. That's right. That's right. So you need to organize. Organize however you can. Know your role and make it happen. Thank you. All right, everyone. We've reached the end of all of our speeches. Thank you so much for coming out. I just wanted to conclude. Um, all right, I just wanted to conclude with a few thoughts. Um, please join Burlington for Reproductive Justice's next meeting on October 11th from 10 to 12 on North Street in Burlington. At 10 to 12 North Street in Burlington. They'll be working on organizing for the passage of a shield law in Vermont. Um, there are flyers at the table downstairs. They look like this. Um, we also have a 
Jenny Brown. Um, Jenny Brown is an author of Without Apology Speaking on October 12th uh, for the Will, Will Miller Social Justice Lecture Series and, uh, with UVM Gen Action. Um, it'll be on Zoom, and then you can go to the Will Miller Social Justice Lecture Series on the website for details. Um, it's in person at UVM in the Waterman Room at four, in 427. Um, I also just wanted to say a special thank you to Ashley and Paul for all of their leadership. Um, in this, none of this could have been pulled together without them, so thank you so much, you guys. Um, I really, we really appreciate you, and we all really appreciate all of you guys for coming out and for having all of your energy. We couldn't have done this with any of your help, so thank you so much. And finally, please register to vote. It, uh, so basically, please vote for the RLA, um, and more importantly, tell your friends, neighbors, classmates, and coworkers to vote for the RLA. Please spread the news. We can't do this without your help. And lastly, what do we want? The yeah. RLA! What do we want it? Now! What do we want? The RLA! Woos. I'm with Burlington for Reproductive Justice. We were one of the organizations that put together this rally today. It was part of the National Women's March Weekend of Action, and this was the huge Burlington event we were all hoping for. We had 20 different organizations in the community coming out and endorsing the rally, and we had a lot of people here who were very interested in what we had to say. We're here to advocate for the Reproductive Liberty Amendment, Article 22, Proposition 5 on the ballot on November 8th here in Vermont. This is an amendment to the Vermont State Constitution which will guarantee rights, the right to reproductive services in the state for all Vermonters. Once this, legislate, once this amendment is passed, it can't be taken away. No legislator, no governor can change that law because it's part of the Constitution. We're also advocating for a shield law in Vermont. A shield law would protect abortion providers who are in Vermont who are providing telemedical reproductive services to clients who are in states where abortion is restricted or banned. This would give those people hope it would give them a chance to get on with their lives, and we very much hope to get the governor to sign an emergency executive order passing a shield law, and then we'll support legislative efforts to pass a shield law in the state as well. And finally, we're advocating for reproductive justice for everyone, not just in Vermont, not just in the United States, but all over the world.